So um, without further ado, let's do some introductions. Uh, thank you to everyone tuning in today. We're here to talk about staking and nomination pools, which recently, well, nomination pools, staking has been live on Polkadot, but nomination pools have been live, oh, one second, and are... Now all of our speakers are here. <laughs> Uh, nomination pools recently went live on Polkadot at the end of October, really on the CET time in between October 31st and November 1st. And since then, um, they have been a massive success, if I do say so myself. So joining us here today, we have Kian, who leads staking and all nomination pools and all staking initiatives uh, at Parity Technologies. We have Paulo joining us, um, who is representing just the, um, uh, an uh, enthusiastic nominator, let's say. We have Anton joining us as a uh, founder of Nova Wallet. And we also have Jonathan joining us as founder from Talisman Wallet. Both of these wallets, uh, um, Nova particularly, uh, was one of the first to integrate nomination pools, and Talisman have some of the biggest pools open, so they really represent um, our wallets here today. So um, without further ado, just uh, really quick, I, I did mention that uh, nomination pools went live on November 1st, so they've only been live for less than two months. And in that time, we've already max capacity, or you guys have all max capacity as um, holders at 64 pools. I should mention that on Polka Assembly, there is a discussion to increase nomination pools by another 64. Um, more than 730,000 DOT is locked up in these nomination pools alone, and, which is a huge accomplishment in, the le in less than two months. And almost roughly, actually, 3,000 accounts uh, are contributing to nomination pools. So um, without further ado, let's dive in here. Uh, Paulo, let's begin with you. I wanted to ask, why should someone stake DOT? Uh, hello, hi everyone. Um, why everyone uh, should stake DOT? Well, I believe the uh, DOT is a really nice uh, ecosystem to um, to work on, and it's a really nice project. So I, I, I believe that uh, staking DOT increases the potential of uh, getting more rewards and more of the 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 the, the dots that uh, people collect so uh, i think it's a, it's a, it's a good thing to 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 have yes wonderful and and anton do you want to add there about like um securing the network and um some of the benefits that uh, uh being a dot holder what what you're actually doing by staking dot i should say Oh, yes, sure. Uh, yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, Anton here. So I think one of the major advantages, uh, well, in addition to what Paul just mentioned regarding like rewards and uh, all these things, but DOT is one of the tokens that has many of the utilities. And while you're staking your DOT tokens, you can also utilize the power of the DOT token to participate in the governance activities. Mm -hmm. So you can use your tokens to represent your voice for the actions uh, in the ecosystem, right? So that would be one of the out-of-the-box features that you receive while you're staking your DOT tokens, right? So you can stake your tokens and also use them in the governance-related uh, activities. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just wanted to highlight this one. Wonderful. Yes. Um, oh, did someone... Oh, Paulo, did you have anything to add? Sorry, you. Uh, no, no, no. It's oh. uh, just to totally agree what uh, Anton just just uh, ju just mentioned. Um, apart from uh, uh, collecting rewards, it's also collect out, uh, bonding the the, the dots. It also perform the, the 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 security of the the, the polka dot um, network, which is a really nice 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 thing to have. Yeah, wonderful. Um, Kian, nomination pools are one of the key features um, from the roadmap of uh, staking improvements that uh, your team wanted uh, to add to Polkadot. As someone that led the initiative, can you tell uh, the listeners what nomination pools are? 
Right, so uh, hi everyone. So nomination pools are our primary uh, means to increasing the inclusivity of staking dots. So uh, prior to that, in order to stake you, you would either have to be a validator or a nominator, both of which are roles that have some uh, requirements. Either you have to run your, your own hardware or you have to be an active role like a nominator and choose the best validators. You need to have a certain minimum threshold of dot in order to be, to, to be able to do that. And with pools, we basically open the door for everyone else to join and uh, collectively uh, stake their dots. Um, in, in very simple terms, I can say that each, uh, each nomination pool is essentially one nominator from the point of view of the rest of the system. One nominator and all the, all the pool members that are in that pool basically have the same opinion. So they are bundled together as one, one nominator. Wonderful. And, and Turbo, as a as a nominator, um, you've experienced firsthand maybe these pains of like minimum bond with native staking. Currently, I saw due to what I would, it's an assumption, but the success of nomination pools, uh, that minimum bond is all the way up to 213 dot today. But can you talk about how nomination pools lower that barrier of entry? Paulo, that. Uh, sorry. No worries. Uh, is, um, is, sorry. Can 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 you can you can you just uh, repeat the question? Yeah, of course. So, um, Kian had mentioned that mm -hmm. uh, how nomination pools lower the barrier to entry uh, for staking mm -hmm. dot because nominators have this minimum bond, and um, mm -hmm. as as a nominator yourself, you've probably experienced maybe the pains of of. Um, not being able to uh, mm -hmm. bond uh, yeah. to receive rewards, essentially. Um, can you talk about how nomination pools lower the barrier to entry? Uh, yes, so with, with nomination pools in place uh, on Polkadot, uh, so as McKeon mentioned, that uh, um, anyone without uh, without no, and anyone with uh, with a small uh, f amount of uh, dots, uh, I believe it's just one dot. Uh, can be a member of these pools, and uh, all these members collect. Uh, all these members collect uh, collectively um, <clears throat> uh, for each nomination pool. Uh, they just become a kind of uh, um, a nominator for the um, for the. Um, they 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 act as a kind has a single nominator in in the in the. Um, in, in the backing uh, the, the validator. So in that way, it's quite easier for everyone, for any token holder can just particip participate on the network without needing to have a kind of such a high fraction of uh, dots, which I believe uh, it's, I'm not, not quite sure how much is the amount currently, but it's a uh, hundred and something, uh, or probably more currently, I don't, don't, don't know on top of my head, um, to be a participant of the, the, the um, of the, of the network. Not sure if I understood the question correctly or yeah. if I... No, that's uh, that was that was essentially it. That yes, by <laughs> by participating. <laughs> no, it's wonderful by by participating in nomination pools. Essentially, like you said, um, mm -hmm. nominators can now earn rewards with as low as essentially one dot. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. And this, you know, um, this can actually leads in nicely to like the differences between nominated proof of stake and delegated proof of stake, because maybe some people listening might think, well, why does Polkadot have this minimum bond? Other networks don't. Uh, what's the reason for that? Um, if if you could maybe to discuss that or more importantly, why we went with nominated proof of stake. Right. Uh, I, that's a tough question to answer in a voice format and in a few minutes, but I'll do my best. Um, so I think this all really goes back to the core value proposition of Polkadot, which is sharing its security, aka validator set, with the rest of the Polkadot ecosystem, aka all the parachains. And in order to do this in a good way, Polkadot chose to or wished to have a validator set that has very good properties in terms of economic security that, uh, or in other words, I can say Polkadot wants to have the best validator set possible that it can, that it can possibly gather. 
And a large chunk of the security of the validator set comes from the, from the people that delegate or nominate or in some way contribute to the stake of validators. It's not just the self stake of validators, validators in, in proof of stake systems that build up the economic security. It's also, it's also the people who delegate. So in, in Polkadot, um, we have this uh, more complicated role called nominator instead of a delegator. Um, that has a few few different properties. For example, nominators can choose different, uh, up to 16 or 24 validators, depending on the network. Um, and uh, well, the, the, the main, uh, the main uh, difficult part for the protocol is that then the protocol decides how the stake uh, among these 16 or 24 approvals is divided between, between the validators such that the economic security properties of the chain is is the absolute maximum that that it can be and because of this this uh complicated process cannot be uh basically have an infinite number of nominators participating in it and this is the sort of the the simply put the underlying reason why the number of nominators in polkadot has been uh somewhat limited uh, but the benefits we've also uh, i think there have been talks in the past or blog posts that talk about the uh, the benefits that this uh, this process brings, um, I think, off the top of my head, I can say that the uh, the economic security properties of Polkadot is a solid twenty thirty percent better than what it could have been if it were to use DPoS as its proof of stake mechanism. So there's a bit of a trade off there. We uh, Polkadot essentially chose a better economic security uh, at the cost of having a more slightly more complicated proof of stake system. Everything that I said so far is, is is targeting nominators, of course. Now with pools, we are we're essentially capable of having both uh, a very <clears throat> a very hard, uh, very high inclusivity combined with this uh, great economic security property that nominators are providing. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, essentially what you're saying is um, nominated proof of stake is like designed for maximum security, uh, decentralization, energy efficiency, and fair representation, effectively balancing the interests also of smaller and larger dot holders alike and evening out, uh, evening it out. But on the other side, you get things like minimum bond. However, with things like nomination pools, um, we're still able to find solutions to these barriers that, that come with nominated proof of stake. Uh, so, um, Jonathan, we, we haven't heard from you yet. Uh, can you can you tell people how they could join a nomination pool? Hey, thanks for having me on. Um, Luckily, joining a nomination pool is is a pretty easy process nowadays, which is nice to say. Um, you just need to fund your account with, I guess, one or two plus dot to cover the existential deposit, and then the one dot minimum that you have to stake. Uh, have that in a wallet. Uh, any wallet in the ecosystem should be able to connect to the to the relevant interface. Uh, and then you just need to head to. I would recommend the Talisman staking interface on the Talisman web app. Uh, to do an easy one-click stake uh, into any of the pools that are there. Uh, or you can use the Parity dashboard or the Polkadot.js um, apps AI uh, UI to uh, join a pool. Um, but it should be a relatively easy process depending on which you choose. However, uh, we've had some pretty good feedback with the Talisman staking interface. So I would say head there uh, with, with any wallet that you've chosen. Uh, if it can connect to Talisman or connect to the web app, uh, then you should be golden uh, to submit a couple of extrinsics and get staking into a pool. Excellent. I actually had that as a question for later, but since you touched on it, maybe we'll roll into that. Um, I, I saw that you guys recently, or maybe it wasn't so recently, but recently promoted it, uh, one-click staking. Uh, can you talk about what that is? I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but... <laughs> It's a one-click staking, but <laughs> what that really means, what you're what you're doing. Yeah, it's um, it's actually less than self-explanatory. If I if I dig into it 
Um, the, the concept of one-click staking is, is really just this simple tool uh, that allows users to make, I guess, an intelligent decision about which pool to choose within a few clicks and without much prior knowledge about uh, the conditions as to which they're agreeing to. Um, so, so the kind of nomination pools kind of started uh, for Talisman with this being the catalyst to build the staking interface, which we've always wanted to, where any user, as long as they have more than one dot, can go from not staked to staked in as few clicks as possible and not have to interface with any of the concepts like selecting validators or kind of navigating who's been slashed and who hasn't been slashed and things like that. Um, however, potential stakers still have the important task of selecting a pool to join, which does involve some less than friendly concepts like commission and slashing records and things like this. Uh, so we just create a little tool that queries the state of all of the pools and the validators which they nominate uh, to provide the user with some recommendation on which pools they could consider joining uh, that meets some certain criteria. Uh, and then that's how we can achieve like a, a one or two click uh, staking flow, uh, which the user can still feel like they can trust uh, is, is leading them to a good outcome. Wonderful. And um, oh, before we continue, I just want to remind our speakers that if you have any questions during um, all of this talk, it is it, it can get complicated to do this. Um, like at, as Kian already said, there is no slides, there is no seeing anything. But if you have any questions, you on the lower right hand corner where you see that little chat box thing, and then number three, you can go in there and type any of your questions, and I'll make sure to ask those to our speakers as we. Um, as the Twitter space goes on. So uh, Anton, let, let's go over to you and, and Nova Wallet, who also, um, I believe, has one-click staking as well. Um, you were one of the first mobile wallets to provide access to nomination pools. Um, can you tell us how you integrated nomination pools and why? Sure. Uh, I guess I will start with the second question, like the why one. Um, it just was a moment uh, which in the, our ecosystem, the minimal amount uh, of staking dot um, was increasing by daily, right? And it just, like, from the community perspective, they were really uh, are requiring some tool uh, for them to select less than, like, let's say 200 uh, dots, right? So nomination pools were just in time uh, introduced on the Polkadot which allowed all of the, these folks who has less than 200 dots uh, to basically stake and earn rewards daily. So that was our main reasoning, to make sure that everyone can utilize on-chain staking uh, basically in our ecosystem, right? So that was our goal. Uh, regarding the how, so no wallet has the DIA browser, which supports uh, all of the applications in the Polkot ecosystem. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, and the perfect app for the staking in the nomination pools, uh, I think, is the Polkadot staking dashboard. Um, so what we have done so far, we have tuned the Nova Dia browser to work with the um, Polkadot staking dashboard uh, so that anyone can basically open their Nova wallet and go to the Polkadot staking uh, dashboard D app, connect their wallet, and stake it very, pretty much easily with all the staking analytics and all the features available. We also have recorded the um, one minute guide for the community so that we can um, basically make more voice to the announcement of the nomination pools so that users can see this uh, pretty straightforward guide how they can utilize the staking now. So yeah, that's the story. Awesome, sorry about that, couldn't come off mute. Um, Jonathan, uh, Talisman currently has some of the biggest nomination pools. Uh, can you talk a little bit, a little bit about how you think maybe you're able to get um, so many contributors so fast? Uh, yeah, it's been really encouraging to see so many people contribute dot into the nomination pools, particularly into the Talisman pools that we're running. And I don't, I don't really think there's any magic behind those pools getting a lot of contributions. I'm led to believe that Talisman's interface was or is the interface of choice to join pools and manage your stake. 
and the default option there is currently the talisman pool. Um, so I think, if anything, it, it just goes to show that users, particularly those that are entering the ecosystem and are looking to maybe experiment or manage a smaller amount of DOT, really just prefer well-designed and, and well-engineered interfaces. Um, so it's important that we we continue to build this standard of UX in the ecosystem and uh, and that gateways in, or interfaces like this are run in a like a community oriented or, or trustful way um, since they are so popular. Wonderful. I pinned, I think, uh, by far my favorite Super Bowl ad to this Twitter space. Um, I, I, I argue that it was magic. Uh, maybe not the reason why everyone contributed, but uh, if you have a minute, <laughs> check this. The ad was magic. It was. It was. Um, I, I'm a sucker for for everything that that stands for. Uh, yeah. So so those tuning in that haven't seen it, make sure to check that out. Um, so uh, up next, uh, in a, Anton, in a, in addition to nomination pools, there's also uh, like just simply staking on the network as a nominator. Um, can you discuss the differences between like if you're a nominator, maybe? Um, why you would want to do one or the other. And I'll probably uh, feel free to our other speakers to tack on to this because there there is a lot of them. Yeah, I think we can discuss it together with the Kian and others. Uh, but <laughs> basically, to be short and concise, uh, it all falls down to how much dot you have, right? So if you have something less than, let's say, 300 or maybe even 400 uh, dots, then probably nomination pools is the best option for you to go, right? So you will not be bothered with any uh, changes in the network state. Uh, you will receive uh, your rewards daily as you're supposed to. And basically you'll have no issues with your staking uh, using nomination pools. Um, so that brings us to the question like, why would you ever be a nominator then? Uh, right, so if the nomination pools uh, are the perfect solution for you. Uh, the answer to that is probably the current state of um, what you get when you're staking in nomination pools. And I would say that personally for me, it falls down to two things. So first, you need to claim rewards manually. Uh, as far as I remember, maybe Kain can jump in and provide some updates on it. Uh, but you need to basically go to the... Uh, the app you are using and manually either claim rewards or tell uh, the blockchain to um, to basically move your rewards to, to the staking, so to, to restake them, right? So that's the first part. And the second part, as I was mentioning uh, before, uh, you cannot use um, the tokens that you're staking in the nomination pools into the governance activities because technically those tokens um, Whenever you send them to the nation pools, they're leaving your account, so they're no longer on your account, but they are on the system account of the uh, of the pool, right? Uh, therefore, you don't have access, uh, at least direct one, um, so that you cannot utilize them, uh, let's say, in the governance. So those two points still bring you to the point that you, uh, as a dot holder, for example, if you, if you have like more than four hundred dots. Uh, Personally, I would say that it's better to use um, the staking as a nominator. So that would be my reply to that. May I jump in right away and uh, add a little bit, Emily? Sure, yeah. sure. <laughs> so um, I want to first add a, a second uh, argument or clause to the first question, when you should be a pool member and when you should be a nominator. I think uh, as uh, Polkadot staking is evolving, we are more and more developing uh, the, the the system in a way that nominators are becoming a more active role than a passive one. Uh, from years ago, we we I remember the day that we went over all the wikis of Polkadot and all the documentations, uh, making sure we never say that nominators are like a set and forget role. They are an active role that should monitor the validators, um, be aware if a slash is happening, be aware if, if the validator that they're choosing is, you know, suddenly changing their commission or doing all sorts of like, you know, uh, malicious or partially malicious activities. And I think pools are actually a step toward that, a further step toward that. If you want to be a nominator, you get those extra uh, 
benefits that Anton mentioned, but you should also be aware that you have these extra responsibilities as well. And um, to, I, I think, I think a, a possible feature would be that a lot of the nominators would basically transform themselves, especially the active ones, those that, those that fit the properties that I mentioned, they would transform themselves into being pools and they basically, you know, perform the same activities, but, uh, but they allow others to join them. Now, of course, those limitations that were mentioned were also uh, real. And I think right now a, uh, a, a factor to be taken into account, but the good news they have is that they're all sort of known, tracked, and they have very well-defined uh, solutions that hopefully we would implement not too long in the future. I would say in the next, I don't know, two to six months or something, uh, including, um, I think uh, there's a very simple patch coming very soon that would allow the claiming of rewards to be optionally permissionless. So as a pool member, you can say, you know what, anyone can claim my reward. Of course, not claim it for, for themselves, but anyone can trigger the transaction that tra that moves your reward from this reward pot to your account. And kind of the, the scenario that I, uh, I can imagine is that some pool operators would say, hey, if you join my pool, I'm going to claim your reward for you on a daily basis, or I'm going to compound it for you. Um, that's the, I think that's the one that's coming like in the very soon. Um, not too long in the future after that, uh, we're going to have optional commission for pools as well. So operators that are actually providing some kind of competitive uh, performance in any way, for example, choosing the best validators, the most secure ones, or uh, doing this uh, auto compounding for you can, can set a uh, commission for you. I really want to emphasize this is also completely optional because um, running a pool is way less burden than running a validator. So if I'm saying my honest opinion, I think the, the default commission for pools is going to hover around 0% anyway, but there might be some pools that put a very small amount of commission for some extra functionality. Um, and lastly, and I shall keep myself from getting too long because I'm going to, I can, I can keep talking about the next steps of staking and pools for a long time. Uh, the governance participation in pools is also something that we're aware of and uh, will be solved. Uh, we're just like kind of thinking about the different approaches, whether to go with the short term approach that's going to like solve it in the short term, but might not work so well in, in the next few years, or whether we should go for the long term approach. But I can I can guarantee that it would uh, it's not a unsolvable problem anyway, but it's a limitation for now. Okay, I think I may have answered like uh, some of the feature questions as well, but I, I'll hand it back to you, Emily, now. I think that was, uh, <laughs> Wonderful. And we also got an interesting question. Maybe you can um, address this. It, um, okay, so uh, one of our listeners asked, do we foresee nomination pools being able to participate in governance? Something like users within the pool essentially delegate their votes to whoever is running a pool. So um, once we, so the, the, the underlying sort of like uh, technical problem right now is that joining a pool in, implies a transfer. You transfer your funds from some account that you control to some account that only the pool's logic control, not only the pool, not the pool operator. I also want to really want to emphasize this. Basically, you transfer your funds into a account that's uh, controlled by Polkadot, so to speak. And this makes governance participation somewhat complicated. Um, the short term solution would be that we allow you to basically do something that's called split voting from this shared account. So if this shared account has a thousand dots and you own 10 dots in it, you can say, OK, this account votes on this proposal. Let's say yes, with the 10 dots that you own. That's kind of the short term solution. And it would enable this uh, rather quickly. Uh, doing things like conviction voting would be a little bit difficult. But the long term solution that we're kind of like evaluating right now and we're considering that maybe we should just jump to that straight is to eliminate this uh, transfer altogether. So when you join a pool, very similar to staking, uh, instead of doing a transfer, we would just put something like a lock or a reserved notion on, on the portion of funds that you have in the pool. And then anything that you can do with a normal account is possible. You can vote on governance stuff directly yourself, or you can, of course, delegate it to the pool operator that you choose. But that's something that the UI can do for you. It's not really a protocol manner. Same with validators, like Polkadot or any of its UIs don't 
don't do this by default to the best of my uh, knowledge, but technically you can delegate your staking funds as you're nominating to all the validators that you're kind of nominating as well. A UI can simply go ahead and give you a tick box that says, you know, once you're nominating, why don't you delegate as well? So if we do this long-term approach, which is probably what we prefer to do, all of these scenarios would be possible. Wonderful. And there's a, another question here, and I'm just, I'm s selecting speakers, but feel free to just pass it on if, if um, but Jonathan, uh, are there any risks to participating in nomination pools or staking? Um, there is the, the same risks that apply to, I guess, conventional uh, staking, where you are yourself a nominator apply here where the validators which you end up kind of dominating by proxy of the pool, if they get slashed, uh, then that can affect your stake. Um, and I guess the additional risk that, that, that may be layered on with nomination pools is you're trusting then the pool operator to keep the pool running. Um, I think they can elect to optionally kind of uh, end the pool uh, if they choose to not be an operator anymore. So that is a risk um, that's posed to the user if they're making the assumption that this is going to run forever. Um, so that's something to verify with your pool operator when you join the pool. Um, but otherwise, uh, it's it's kind of on-chain um, and it's not uh, incurring any trust assumptions like kind of staking on a centralized exchange would. Uh, so the risks that are posed with uh, I don't know, conventional nominating uh, just apply here as well. Wonderful. And um, Paulo, I'll put you on the spot, but again, feel free to, to pass it. Um, what are staking rewards? What are staking re rewards? Yeah, I think it's uh, someone that maybe missed early, earlier, like you can feel free to go anywhere with this, but uh, like, do you get rewarded for staking? Maybe, maybe start there. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I'm not, not sure. What to... uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I, 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 sorry, it's a question. Kian, would you like to take this? Yeah, happily. Um, so, um, by staking, we're basically, uh, as I said, we're diluting ourselves either as a nominator or a pool member in the operation of a validator. So without running the hardware, we are um, we are we are mixing our interests with that person. And th this has two implications. If that validator misbehaves and gets slashed as a as a nominator or a pool member, you also get slashed. But also um, proof of stake systems in order to reward these validators that run this hardware, they usually have some kind of an inflation mechanism. And this is basically where the source of staking rewards are. They're, they're like newly minted token that get distributed between those that basically operate the network for, for the rest of us to use, so to speak. And um, yeah, this is the, this is the underlying uh, source of staking rewards. So as stakers, as, as pool members or nominators, we are, uh, we are, we are mixing our both exposure to reward and, and slash uh, with the validators that are actually operating the network. Perfect. And um, th this was already covered, but um, you know, people join late. Uh, maybe Kian, do you wanna take this one? Um, it's how much dot do I need to stake? Um, to stake as a nominator, I think that the threshold is only increasing, which is kind of good news because it means more people are using pools like the, because as I said, every pool is a nominator under the hood. I think you need somewhere around 200 dots right now to be a direct nominator and as little as one plus or sorry, two plus dots to be a pool member. So uh, given that threshold and the sort of the activity criteria that I mentioned earlier, whether you want to be like a relatively active person or a passive person, you can 
uh, you can choose which avenue of staking you would uh, you would choose. I think to be a validator, you need around 1.7 million dots just to complete my uh, answer. So that's all the possibilities there. Wonderful. And we just got um, Paradox. Hello, Paradox. I see you're in here. Um, pointed out that, oh, and now I lost your comment, um, that uh, a, a risk associated with nomination pools is though is that you can't switch to pools quickly. You'll need to unbond and switch. So I thought maybe you could touch on like unbonding periods because that actually applies to both staking and and nomination pools. Um, yeah, so uh, for, I think, again, the history of unbonding period in Polkadot is something that uh, a lot of people ask about because it's uh, a little bit longer or more strict than the, you know, the average proof of stake system out there. Uh, again, goes back to uh, making sure that the validator set is uh, as secure as it can be. And, and people who are in this validator set or the validators have the least amount of incentive to misbehave. Uh, the purpose of the unbonding period is to uh, prevent misbehaviors that are detected with a delay. So let's say now we realize that a validator two weeks ago did something wrong, signed something mistake, no, not mistakenly, that would be, that would be, a, or maliciously, so to speak. Um, so, and, and sort of, the, the, the number that sort of the Polkadot designers or the community eventually landed on is that 28 days is the period that we want this unbonding period to be. We want this, uh, we want this um, retroactive misbehaviors to be detectable upon. Um, and this applies to both uh, normal staking and nomination pools. Uh, there's a little bit of a difference there now because as a nominator, you can sort of like nominate and while you're still bonded, you can change your nomination preferences. Whereas joining a pool, if you want to switch the pool, you need to, as of now, um, sort of exit the pool, which requires this 28 days to be passed and then join the new one. I, I haven't been asked yet, or I haven't gotten into the detail of the feature plans, but fixed or improving this is also one of the, uh, one of the, listed uh, features that fe uh, features that we want to work on the ability to swap pools uh, in a in a quick way but as of now it's not possible perfect and you and you really just answered this but it was a question under that question which is would we ever reduce the or do you think we the minimum bond that at minimum bond, sorry, the unbonding period. Would we ever? It's hard to say. We would Polkadot ever consider uh, reducing the unbonding period? Right. So actually, I I do have some uh, sort of personal opinions on that. Um, I will soon publish a, a list of features that I think uh, are well, not personal. I would say it's like the staking team within Parity's personal opinions about. Uh, the next set of features that Polkadot staking can have. Um, I think this is something that I'm doing now toward the end of the year in a little bit of a retrospective manner, looking back at everything that we've done over the past year, year and a half, and listing the next possible steps. Uh, I will publish this full list or, or write-up in, in either Polka Assembly or Polkadot Forum, or actually both. Uh, in the next few weeks, but actually one of the items in there is that we can probably, you know, uh, decide uh, to be a little bit more lenient uh, towards this unbonding period, especially when we take the amount of dots that are being unstaked as a function of this unbonding period. So instead of the unbonding period being a fixed 28 days for, you know, me who has 100 dots bonded and some whale that has a million dots bonded, it should be maybe either a function of how much you own you know if you if you own a very little amount of dots uh, you might it might be okay to let you off the hook faster uh, or a function of how much of dots are being unstaked all together right now so if the first for example 2% of dots that are being unstaked they can be unstaked in a faster way but the next 4% needs to then wait uh, 7 days and you know after 5% or after 10%, we fall back to the default maximum 28 days or something like that. So uh, we, we're formulating ideas along these lines, but of course, this is a, a long-term effort and a collaborative one that 
everyone in the community needs to uh, kind of chime in on and eventually we can decide if we want to go there or not. Awesome. And Anton, I'll throw this one over to you because you kind of touched on it earlier as well. Someone had asked, as a nominator, where do I get my rewards? So as an, that's actually a good question. I wonder uh, if Ken would to cover it for the nomination pools, but for the nominators, um, you as a person who stake as a nominator are free to choose from multiple options. First, you can restake your rewards. So that will be done automatically on chain. So as soon as the rewards are allocated to your account and being, uh, being paid by uh, anyone basically in the system, but usually it's uh, done by the validators, right, automatically. So you don't need to care about it. So your rewards will be basically assigned to increase your stake. So that's the first option. And I think that's the most, um, the common one, right? So the most popular one. Uh, the second one is... Um, you can receive the rewards in so-called transferable balance. So as soon as you receive your rewards on your account, you can transfer them. You can transfer them to any other account or you can do whatever you want with them, right? And the third option actually is coming from the second. And the idea is that you can select not only your account uh, for this transferable rewards to be received, but any account in the in the blockchain, right? So... Yeah, that's up to you. You can select uh, any account you would like um, rewards to be sent to. So that's three options for you. And probably Kain can cover the um, rewards option for the nomination pools and maybe give us some uh, <laughs> spotlight for future plans. Um, yeah, so uh, as, uh, for pools, because the whole pool is basically one nominator, everything that Anton said kind of happens until the the pool receives its reward and every uh every pool is basically acting as a nominator uh who i think chooses the second option among the three that was mentioned so the pools don't compound by default they they, they put the rewards all in a uh, separate account and those who want to compound it have an option to compound it or and those who want to transfer it out to their sort of their 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 private account they can they can do that um so these are basically the two options that you also have in pools i kind of just gave them away so you can you can either uh compound or you can transfer it out to your to to your personal account um the, the other option to transfer it to a third account i think it's uh, again something that can be done uh, possibly a UI can batch two transfers for you or something like that. Um, but I think the main difference is that uh, in pools, uh, at least for now, only you can claim your reward. It's not like direct nomination where validators can claim nominator rewards for them. But this will, uh, this will change uh, very soon. All right, well, we made it through all of our community questions. Um, so before we end today, I wanted to just ask everyone, um, all of our speakers today, what we can expect next. Uh, Kian, you've already touched on a lot of it, but why don't you just, <laughs> what, what can people expect next from nomination pools and staking on the parody side? Yeah, I think I mentioned almost everything here and there in a scattered way. I'll maybe just quickly reiterate them and, and leave the time for other speakers to uh, to to give their updates. So uh, permissionless claim of rewards, commission, these are coming very soon to uh, nomination pools. And more in the long term, we're going to have uh, features like governance participation, uh, switching between pools, perhaps, and something that I didn't mention, joining multiple pools at a time. All of these things, we opted not to do them for sake of simplicity, not because they were not possible. We wanted the first implementation to be something that's a very, very easy to develop and uh, reason about uh, the first nomination pool system. Uh, so that's it for, stake, uh, for, for nomination pools. And for staking, I think I only talked about uh, potential faster and stake and uh, yeah actually I'll, I'll leave it at that as I said I think in the next one or two weeks I'll have a, uh, a long write-up on this in the Polkadot forum I, I encourage everyone to continue the discussion there so that's it for me thank you 
Wonderful. And Jonathan, what can we expect from Talisman or even um, for you and, and Nova as well? You can talk about what what Talisman we haven't even got to cover, what features Talisman has. Uh, well, I'll start with specifically for nomination pools. Um, some optional, yeah, Kian mentioned the optional controls, which uh, a user might opt to give a pool operator to claim the stake on behalf of them. Uh, we're, we're pretty keen on that, as that would reduce some friction for the user. So we can go from one-click staking, but really you have to go back to claim your awards type thing to, to truly one-click set and forget staking. Um, and something which Kian mentioned right at the end there, and something that we've had an eye on is uh, what's called fast unstaking. And this is just essentially like a, a more seamless migration from uh, a conventional kind of dominator role, um, which isn't earning rewards at the moment. So you have less than the 213 dot, I think it is, um, into uh, a position where you're in a pool. Um, and that might be able to navigate around the, the requirement for an unbonding period. So that's something we've got an eye on. Um, and just better kind of tutorials and documentation uh, and some maybe some additional staking options uh, like kind of parachain, some some of the staking uh, offerings on, on the parachains like A star DAP staking uh, or even some of the derivative tokens that currently live on parachains. That might be something we... Uh, we can look to include inside of the talisman staking interface. Wonderful, thank you, Jonathan and Anton. What can we? Um, what's next for Nova Wallet? Right. So for the Nova, I think I will start from not obvious one, but since we support in Nova governance and open gov. Uh, and Kian mentioned that people will be able to to basically use the tokens uh, in the nomination pools in the governance, right? So we will need to support this as well in Nova, right? So now those folks who are using Nova uh, and staking in nomination pools, that means that they will be able to also now unlock the governance features in Nova. So we will support that as well as soon as it will be available. Uh, as for the nomination pools themselves, uh, there are a couple of interesting ideas floating around, uh, but for sure we would like to also have a native interface right in Nova, because not only it is uh, a hugely demanded feature uh, from our community, right, but also some of the networks uh, and staking options that we have in the Nova, they also started to deploy the nomination pools features on their networks because of how Substrate is uh, designed to be a modular blockchain framework. So as soon as we have the nomination pools on the Polka and Kusama, uh, now other networks can utilize the same functionality. So we also have other community members which uh, would like to have the nomination pools uh, feature supported by uh, for their network. So you can expect uh, not only the native user interface for the nomination pools for the Polkadot, but also for other staking options that you can already see in Nova or which are coming uh, in the future. Wonderful. And last but certainly not least, Paulo, um, can you talk, share some thoughts or ideas behind the pools that uh, you actually operate? Um, yes, so we are actually running two, two, two nomination pools on Kusama, one nomination pool on, on Polkadot. So one of the ideas that uh, we were thinking of in terms of just to, to moving forward to, uh, the, the, to what can we give or potentially dynamize more the, 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 the pools that we currently run. Um, so in the past, we were thought that, to, okay, so could we eventually collect some funds from the from treasury and eventually just bond those funds against those pools and those 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 funds this potentially will work more on on kusama uh, that potentially will just um allow the validators that are backed by the, the those pools 
to be um, to be more uh, uh, with chances to to be to be to participate on the on the on the on the on the validator set. Um, but now those thoughts, to be honest, has has been changed a bit. So we have been I've been thinking of more kind of presenting a in, in, probably in a few weeks or so um, presenting another idea in terms of allowing some kind of um, again, funds from treasury uh, to support these validators that we nominate on our pools, because these nominators that, that these, actually, these validators that we, that we nominate in our, in our pools, they are all uh, under the, the, the TPP, um, the thousand validator program. So it would be really nice if we could just support those validators as much as we can. So I, one of the ideas that came, came across as well, and uh, reading also um, some uh, poke, poke assembly posts was to eventually collect some, uh, some, some funds from treasury and eventually just uh, reward those validated those validators that are nominated by our pools uh, via tips or eventually also send some nfts through these validators and potentially the nominators that are backing these uh, validators that are currently um, being uh, nominated um, but anyway this is this these are just random thoughts that we that i have been thinking uh, recently uh, there are some work uh, already done, but uh, it's something that we need to put on paper actually, just to, to kind of present a, 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 a draft proposal to the community and see what what others think about it. Um, but yeah, but we have something to to in our you know, in our mind to 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 put in place and to present to the community and see what what others think. So rather than just staying um, um, with the with the um, with the program that we're currently running at the moment, so I think we would like to be more participative, more participative, and a little bit more active in terms of what we can do with the pools. So that's one of the the, the thoughts behind this new proposal that we are pro probably planning to to present in a, I don't know maybe a few weeks as soon as we as I get a little bit more time actually. Wonderful, thank you, Paulo. So. We are at time here, and I see that there are no new questions. So I would just like to thank all of you for joining, everyone for tuning in. I would like to thank all of our speakers, uh, Talisman, Nova Wallet. Um, I always want to say Turbo Flakes, but Paulo, yeah. <laughs> I can from Parity uh, for, for tuning in, taking time out of your day to educate the community on staking and nomination pools and your wallets and uh, your pools, and in your case, Paulo. Um, also, th just a, a little um, something to think about. Uh, th this is a great time uh, to call out. Go check if you are staking right now. Make sure you're actively staking. I kid you not. I checked today and I just realized I had one account with less than 214 dot in it. So I am not an active staker in one of my accounts. So this, this Christmas, give yourself the gift of actively staking. And you can do that with uh, Polkadot.js. You can do that with Talisman Wallet. You can do that with Nova Wallet. Uh, make sure to go check out... Um, all of your options and uh, an overview that also includes Nova Wallet and Talis, um, Talisman Wallet is at polkadot.network slash staking. Thank you to everyone for tuning in and have a happy holidays.